Welcome back to another edition of the College Football Games That Made Us. Probably the last one before the football gets started back up this year. This week we got Philip Slavin in. Philip, uh, after I spoke with Parker about TCU's big win, and I asked kind of, are there anybody that's got a game they want to talk about, Philip? He spoke up and said he wanted to talk about 2008 Oklahoma State at Missouri. This was not a game I was super familiar with, but now that I've gone back and watched it and done some research on it, and and kind of look through the game. It was a really really fun game, an interesting game, uh, especially if you were an Oklahoma State fan. So, Philip, what makes this game so special to you? Okay, so a uh, little bit of backstory here. Um, I went to Oklahoma State two thousand three two thousand four uh, one year. Um, just I was not a good student. Let's just put it that way. And uh, they basically said uh, you can come back for summer school or don't come back. My parents said. We're not paying for that. Uh, so a couple of years of community college. But the year I was there, um, kids, do a good job in school. Pay attention. Go to class. Do your work. Uh, while I was there was the year that the basketball team made the run to the Final Four. Um, I am still a diehard Oklahoma State basketball fan. Tony Allen's my favorite player of all time, in large part because of that team in that year. Um, I didn't grow up with like college a college team. My parents both went to Northeastern in Tahlequah, Oklahoma. It's not, you know, whatever, uh, pro teams. Like I was kind of a Niners and a Chiefs fan. Cause my grandpa was because he loved Joe Montana and grew up in Kansas city. So I didn't have some sort of like locked in affinity for any, any college or pro sports. So you weren't, you weren't um, a big country guy. I didn't, I didn't pay attention back then. Again, my, yeah. like we grew up in Oklahoma, but my parents didn't didn't care. They didn't care. That yeah. wasn't that wasn't something that was important to them. So it and or and no one in my family really cared. So it's not like I had any sort of influence. It's to like I should like OU, I should like OSU, I should like any of these sports. Um, I played soccer growing up as a kid. So I don't know, that 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 was the extent of my like sports stuff. I just it's just not something I paid a lot of attention to. Uh until I went to OSU for my freshman year. Uh, and I just fell in love with March Madness and college basketball. It's my first love. Um I, I'm I hate that the team is not as good. So fast forward, um, I've gone through community college for a few years and I end up at Oklahoma because my parents are like, well, we'll, we'll pay in state or you can figure it out. So I said, well, I don't want to have uh, college debt. So sure, send me where you'd like me to go. So I go to Norman, um, where I graduated from. It's always fun. People find out for the first time that I'm a diehard bleed orange Oklahoma State fan uh, who graduated from the University of Oklahoma. OU fans especially like, what? I don't get it. Like, yeah, I thought I, I was doing my research on you. I was like, man, I got to throw away all this film. <laughs> this is, I misread what he said earlier. He said Oklahoma. No, 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 no. You're yeah. right. So, um, I'm working at a now defunct bar called Brothers that was there for years and years and years. Anybody who went to OU or has been through Norman, they they know the place. Um, and I have put up with enough crap from OU fans because I'm an OSU fan and I'm there. And so, <clears throat> I get get done with work on that particular Saturday night. I get off uh, early, um, and so. I think OU is on the road. And so when OU is at home, you're working till you're working from open to close. When they're on the road, it's a little bit different. So that night I get done with work and uh, there's a, a large black pleather like booth that's right in front of a big screen up on the wall. And I've decided I'm just going to park here for tonight. I'm going to park here for this game. And I've always followed Oklahoma State football since I was there. Um, I remember the Cotton Bowl in which he lost to Eli Manning. Like there's games that have always that I remember, right? Um but I cared more about basketball. Basketball was my first love of Oklahoma State, and I liked football. So I'm sitting there in in the bar in Brothers, um, eating dinner, uh, beginning to uh, partake of, uh, of the alcoholic beverages, uh, which many of there were that night. Um, and I'm watching this game, and I'm having to – I have the game on. This is like the bigger TV in the main part of the bar, and I'm having to listen to OU fans walk by and give me crap all night long. They're going to lose. They lose like crap. Duh, 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 duh. You know, it's typical like fan whatever stuff because I'm sitting there in my OSU shirt and having a good time by myself i don't care uh i went to movies alone not, watching something alone is not that big a deal to me. i've, been, I've um, been there i'm with you on that one yeah so i'm i take crap from them all night long while i'm watching what to this day i still think is at at worst mike gundy's second biggest win of his entire career second most important win of his entire career after the, the first big one uh 2011 bedlam trumps it it's number one um, you can make an argument for 2014 Bedlam because it, it there's a debate as to whether or not Gundy would have still been the head coach had he lost that game. But to me, the 2008 season was the one where really think everything seemed to click for Oklahoma State under Mike Gundy. 
Um, that huge win on the road at number three, Missouri, you've got Chase Daniel, who's a Heisman favorite. It's two top offenses in the country, number two versus number three. Uh, you're going on the road for number three team. And as an Oklahoma state fan, like you're just not like going on the road to a top three team is not a game you expect to win. Mm -hmm. But I just felt like sitting down and it, I think it's, it's the first time that I, and I think a lot of fans do, but I just remember it so much as like, I bought in, like, that was it. Like, all right, this Oklahoma state football thing can be a, a real thing. Cause I mean, I, I know it, it may sound a little fair weather, but I'm like, I, you know, again, I didn't have, strong affinities. I was a basketball fan. That was the first thing that I fell in love with. But now I'm sitting here watching this game that while I'm getting just pelted with crap from OU fans who are walking by and proceeding to get a drunker and drunker and drunker. And I have rewatched this game and it is much uglier than I recall it being at the time. Um, but I just, that, that game always sticks out to me as like the first one I was like, okay, I have, I have taken all the trash that OU fans can throw at me whilst watching this game. Uh, which has just been a, like an icing on the cake of getting this win and on this night. And I just, from there on, I, that's the game. Like that was the game that I just said, I'm all in. I, I will, I will be a bleed orange OSU football fan, die hard even more than I have been for forever. Well, I think that's a great way to get into it. Let's listen to how the broadcast describes this game. Cause I think it is a good window into a moment in time and, and what kind of teams we had playing here because I didn't realize some of this here in Columbia, Missouri, as two college football's most prolific and dynamic offenses take the field. The stars, Chase Daniel, Missouri's Heisman hopeful, Jeremy Macklin, their irrepressible and mm -hmm. multi threat mm -hmm. factor, and Oklahoma State's fantastic quarterback, Zach Robinson. Both offenses averaging more than 50 points a game. It's going to be go. number two versus number three. State, Missouri, right now. Just some let this music play intro. real quick. Yeah, it's such a classic intro. Like, it is, man, yeah. prime time. Can we point out the fact that a number three versus number seventeen matchup is the prime time game on ESPN two? It's a matchup of two top seventeen teams. And it's been cast like I need to see what else ESPN was like. What did they put on ABC and what did they put on on ESPN that day that this game got relegated to ESPN two? It looks like you had uh, it just is on the ticker here on the next image. Florida LSU at, at eight o'clock. Maybe that was okay. It. That that would probably be ABC. Yeah, four versus you, eleven. Yeah, and you had uh, uh, Tebow. Uh, yeah. I think that's yeah. a week after they lost to Ole Miss too. So uh, is that the oh I'm never gonna lose a game again? Yep. Never gonna do it. Okay, that was it. <laughs> so we get so we go from there. Obviously, uh, I didn't realize how unbelievably dynamic these offenses were coming into this game. Both averaging over fifty-two points a game. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's pretty mm -hmm. wild. This was kind of the height of that Big Twelve offensive era. I think you had Oklahoma, who was unbelievable that year. Texas as well. And then, yeah, because they were one in five that day, and they actually talked about it in the broadcast. Like Texas had beat, had upset number one Oklahoma earlier that day. Then they talked about how like the OSU coaches took the phones away from OSU fans, like don't even think about it, don't worry about it. We got to focus on this game. And Missouri fans, the Missouri, they're like, well, Missouri watched it, so they they knew what happened. But uh, like Gundy and the coaches were like, just le just no, you don't need to know, you don't need to know what happened. Don't be excited about this. Like it's crazy. Yeah, there was definitely some thought, uh, and it seemed like the prevailing wisdom that if Missouri wins this game, they probably go to number one in the country. Yeah, there's a, there's a real shot of that happening. So that was um, that was also on the line. But we got so Oklahoma State did a nice kind of behind the scenes uh, cinematic well, video. Well, you can hear some of the pregame it's stuff be here. This type of game, so get used to it. You're supposed to be here. You have made this a game, not them. You have proven that you can play with anybody. Now you got to go out and prove it again another way. You deserve to be here and get the damn done. Give me this game with your pass. Win the game with your pass. Now hit them and I'll hustle. Let's have fun doing it. Got me, guys? Go, baby. You practice hard this week. You understand what it takes to win. Okay? You come together as a team. In a game like this, with all the hype and all everything that's surrounding this, what's really important is when that ball is snapped on offense or that ball is snapped and you're on defense, you play with great effort 
until they blow that whistle. Okay? And then after they blow that whistle, you got to play with boys. Okay, formations are getting lined up. You're getting adjusted on defense until they snap that ball again. Then you play with great effort again. You're going to get about 65 to 70 of those of those a game on both sides of the ball. Okay, you understand what I'm saying? You play with poise. You understand. You get lined up when that ball snap. You play hard. You hit them. You you uh you get in that backfield offensively. You block downfield. You do everything. And when that whistle blows, all right, you gather yourself again. You get lined up. You get ready to go again. Okay. You get one shot to do this. What's most important out of this game is when we watch that tape on Monday that you can look to the guy next to you and you say, you know what? I I laid it on the line for him. I did everything I could. You're not going to catch me loafing. If I don't have the ball and I'm one of the other 10 guys on offense, I'm going to play my butt off. If I'm on defense, I'm going to swarm the football. You stay together as a group tight all the time. All right? You go out there and you play your butt off. That's how you win the game. All right, let's go. Right here. All right, all right, all right. Gundy sounds like I know his voice is a little bit younger, but like his mannerisms, the way he talks, the language he uses, like he, he is not changed one iota from 2008 to nine to now. Like it's crazy. Like yeah, you think it, most guys over that period of time, there's a little bit of change. Maybe that, nope. Same guy, exact same guy. Yeah. And, and the team looks really locked in here. And then you'll see one of the, the, my, maybe my favorite clip of the game is at the very end of the game. And it's just a Gundy. It's like a second on him on the sideline. And it's uproariously funny to me. Um, but so obviously nice speech. Everyone seems to be locked in. Missouri comes in with, we saw a top three scoring offense. They also had a streak of scoring a touchdown in the opening drive. Mm-hmm. Um, a pretty long streak of that. They don't uh, every game that season. They had uh, they had they had scored on their opening drive of every game. At this point, it had been a touchdown for every single game, yeah. and uh, they had not been held to a three and out all season. Yes, those are those are those are the couple. Of the uh, spoiler alert: those both get broken <laughs> in this game. Very first three early. out of the season. Uh, yeah, first non touchdown opening drive of the season. And they'd come in, I think, one in winning 18 of 19 games. So this was a really, really good Missouri team. Uh, not quite what you see from them today, but their offense was obviously really good. And we'll we'll start. They actually drive the ball down the field. Now, finding uh, decent-looking footage of this was uh, somewhat of a – I had to go down a rabbit hole a little bit. So I didn't get the whole goal line staying here, but you get third down. Opening drive, they've driven all the way down the field. You can see this is the goal line. I mean, the Oklahoma State's defense is in the end zone right now. So that's how close. The motion chase Daniel out, try to run some wildcat. Blow it up on third down. Do you remember this play specifically? I remember because they had talked about and talked about and talked about. Because when you come into this game, and it's like, and they said before, you're like, you have an offensive shootout. It's going to be so much offense. These are two high-powered offenses, and you're just like, mm, what are what are we going to be in for today? Then, because I doubt it's actually going to be a shootout. Because when you sell me in a shootout that hard, that's not what happens. Yeah, they t- pounding the like. Missouri has scored a touchdown to open every game. They scored to open every game, and then you get a goal line stand on a offense that's high powered at home like that stood out to me so hard in the beginning was them just preaching because they, they said nice things about osu right but i mean it was just because again missouri the year before had what they only lost to oklahoma twice once during the regular season in the big 12 title game because they, they beat no you in the big 12 title game remember it's 2007 it was crazy if oh if missouri beats OU in the big 12 title game they're going to the national championship had west virginia beaten Pit in their uh, season finale. Yeah. They would have gone to the national championship. So we got whoever LSU played, two loss LSU. I don't even remember. It doesn't matter. LSU won the national championship. But like that was the crazy 2007 season. So Missouri's carrying all that back, all that stuff they brought back. Missouri's number three or number two. You know, I saw the OSU clip had them at number two, number three here. Um, but it been such a preach so hard on how good Missouri's offense was to get that goal line stop and hold them to a field goal was just massive. I mean, just huge. And and then on the other side of it, you want to talk about how college football's changed. Is I mean, does Gary Pinkle kick an 18 yard field goal if it's 2021 or 2022? I I would certainly hope. You you would think not, but just goes down. He takes the points. So Oklahoma State's defense and what you think is going to be shootout kind of holds serve on this first drive. 
Offensively, they they go right down the field. Second and goal. Nice quarterback zone read here by Zach Robinson, right? Mm-hmm. And he, um, this is one of the, this is only the second time all year that Missouri has trailed in a game. Uh, they had trailed, I think we were really, uh, against Illinois for 13 seconds. That is yeah. all they had trailed. Uh, they trailed against Illinois for 13 seconds, and then Macklin ran a kickoff back, and they they were back in the lead. Yep. And then this. <laughs> so your first drive of the game. So we're thinking offensive shootout. I think Missouri's drive took six minutes. This drive took about five minutes. So we're you know we're more than three quarters about way through the quarter, and uh, not much had happened. You see here the score is still the same in the second quarter here. Uh, this was. Uh, so yeah, you got you a fourth had, and 17 after a penalty. You had, in this first half, you had like, th- this game, as I re- went back and rewatched it, was, so, yeah, this was a terrible idea. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm I, guessing this was the punter's idea. Gundy uh, does not like to do like, spe- like special team trick things. Like he just really doesn't. I feel like he did this one here and then never wanted to do one again. Someone convinced him, let's do it. And he was like, never again, whenever. That's dumb. Uh, no, like at feeding into the like the ugliness of how ugly this game actually was, three missed field goals in the first half. One by Oklahoma State. I don't know how Dan Bailey missed a field goal. I didn't think he ever missed one. I mean, I'm kidding, but like missed field goal, like 18 yarder. And then Missouri misses two field goals. And so low scoring first half. I think there's a decent amount of like yardage put up, but not yeah. a lot of points. So this gives Missouri a short field. And this is one of the missed field goals. Looks like it may have been blocked, right? So, oh yeah, uh, Missouri goes actually goes down and scores earlier. This is a, a couple of drives later, um, blocked field goal. So the game's still only ten seven at this point. Missouri took that short field from the previous punt, scored a touchdown later in the half. You have this blocked field goal here, and then with fourteen seconds left, Oklahoma State's all, just about in field goal range. There, you got a fumble. Great play coming back and making the tackle there. Because this could have turned into a touchdown right before the half. Probably not, but great play there. I should have had you first half clip the the Des Bryant, the hit on Des Bryant that nowadays, and this is what's crazy to me, nowadays would have led to an ejection. And at that point, you're watching the game. Uh, one of the defenders comes, leads with the helmet, and gets him right in the chin under the chin strap, right? Defender, yeah. like, helmet first, leads for it. And Dez was not great today. Like, and he what you could tell the rest of the game. He had, like, he went down, seemed concussed. Like, he was not great. And you're listening to the the Bob Davy. It's like, yeah, that was a perfectly fine hit, you know? <laughs> it, it wasn't helmet to helmet. He just got him up under the chin. It's like, wait yeah. a minute. So it's it would have been an immediate ejection for the defender if it happened nowadays. So again, 2008, not it's, it's a long time ago, but it's not that long ago. It, <laughs> no. Yeah. Again, weird, beautiful. And, and by, by the way, at this point I've been like, I drank through this entire game. I, I, I worked at a bar. I didn't have to pay a lot if much to drink. So, you know, I don't think I went home with any tips that night. Not, <laughs> not because I didn't receive any, just because I didn't leave the bar with any, um, uh, I'm pretty good here. By the end of the, don't ask me. Who, I again, don't ask me to remember the fourth quarter from that night because I don't no. think I do. So after that, it looks like Missouri maybe it's one play, picks up some yards, and they go for a field goal right before the end of the half, fifty-two yard field goal. And and we got another even miss. Plus. Yeah. So mistake doesn't come back to Hon Oklahoma State. There, the second half seems to be where a lot of the action is. Uh, very early. And this may be, uh, this may be the second, you know, this is one of the early plays of the second half here, a beautiful speed option. Twenty four was, if I recall correctly, Kendall Hunter. Yes, he yes, was a bad was. dude. Oh man, yes. Yeah, Back in the day when when OSU was so good, and look, they still are good at finding kind of gems. But back in the day in 2008, when it was so much easier to, to find diamonds in the rough because you didn't 247 rivals, the recruiting services, they weren't remotely what they are today. Like now it's so hard to find diamonds in the rough because things, I mean, 
back it's then. It's so much easier to share film. So now many too. more guys. Yeah, it's easier to share share film. It's easier to get access to finding guys. So like, it was almost easier to 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 kind of find under the radar guys who would turn into studs. And OSU did such a good job of it back then. I mean, he was. Just, they talked about he was just some some three star, barely recruited kid out of Kansas. I think it. His other offers were like Iowa State, Kansas, a couple of FBS school like G five programs. He came to OSU, and Kendall Hunter was a stud, man. And he had a huge game, not just this one, but you can see later uh, they show his stats up on the top there. He had a big game. At that point, I believe at that point he led the nation in rushing yards or just in rushing. I think that's right. Yeah, I think, and I'm pretty sure he had over 150 or pretty close to it in this game. And here's Whoop. the first of uh, three interceptions in the yes. second half. Chase Daniels, three INT second half. That Well, so much for that Heisman campaign. Yeah, he, <laughs> the previous season was fourth in the Heisman Trophy. Uh, come back and he was kind of the front runner, and this game kind of killed it. So oh, it, it, it killed it, it dead. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's so, doing okay. He's still a back. I'm pretty sure he's still a backup collecting checks yeah. in the NFL. He may be the smartest man alive, <laughs> but he, he's up there. But uh, Missouri gets the ball back after Oklahoma State uh, doesn't turn that turnover into points. Drives down, gets down to the one yard line. They're able to punch it in. So now you got you're kind of going a little bit back and forth here. You got 17 to 14 now. We got a game. Robinson had a great aesthetic, didn't he? Man, he was he was so fun to watch. Uh, do you think he was a little bit early in terms mm. of scheme? Because there is some stuff where they're doing under center stuff. He seems like he would be great for just the pure gun oh, like I, stuff I th- from today. If you if if he came out today, I think he'd be even more lethal. Because yeah. he was so good with his legs. And I mean, you still had quarterbacks to ram, but you just you didn't run quarterbacks then i think to the extent you do now like i really think he would have been nasty yeah he now. seems like a guy that fits now really well but i think you know having him then that's a big part of why oklahoma state had the success it had in 2008 and yeah. 2009 was he was just he was just good just flat out good i mean his career ended those last two games against in bedlam and uh and against Ole miss in the bowl game they basically weakened at bernie's dim because he shouldn't have been playing but you know props yeah. to him for getting to play the last two games of his senior career so kendall hunter i think he was you know he's probably up over 100 yards at this point so missouri's biting up on the play action it looks like you run like a post wheel and you hit him right in stride perfectly for the touchdown to take the lead back so now we're starting to go back and forth. We're starting to see a little bit of that offensive explosion everyone was looking for. Getting more of it. Getting more of it. Uh, that was oh, okay. Hold on. I gotta. I think it's Davis. I'm gonna get the name right. It is Davis. I can't yeah. remember the first name either. Because uh, you came in, you're like Des Bryant. Des Bryant. And like I said, he didn't have a great game. Uh, he got banged up early and just wasn't quite right the rest of the night. Now he had the most receptions. He had seven catches. Um, but Davis ended up with at three catches, uh, seventy six yards and, and and two touchdowns. So both of of Zach Robinson's passing touchdowns went to Davis. Des had yeah seven catches for forty seven yards, just not his night. Yeah, and we'll talk later about how unbelievable Des Bryant's numbers were once oh, you looked oh, in, in the totality of the season and how many touchdowns he ended up with. So Missouri had hit kind of this read little triple option type play earlier in the game. Oklahoma State started doing some different things. You see here they run a game right here where he's going to go inside. He ends up taking the mesh, and he's going to loop around, and it gives Missouri a lot of problems here. They're not quite sure what to do because they're pulling. He pulls it, and you end up having two guys in this face. This is kind of a, a big loss here on first and 10. kills a drive. Well, Chase had done really well with his legs earlier in the game, and they they adjusted defensively. They said, "We're not. Yeah. If you want to beat us, you're going to beat us through the air." And they did that a lot in the second half, which I think is a big part of what led to Chase throwing three interceptions in that second half was yeah. the defensive adjustment. Them trying to Missouri's offense adjusting to what OSU's defense was doing. 
he pulled a similar concept in the first half and had Macklin as a pitch guy, and they just ran to Macklin, and he was able to keep it for a big gain. May have been on the first drive of the game, and there you see they made the adjustment and totally snuffed it out. I put this in because I really like this play. Uh, a lot of times you see this with a tight end or an H back. They motion the receiver back to there to the wing, and he's able to come across. And you can see he's not quite probably as dynamic as he typically is here. This is in the fourth quarter. So one of the things about this game was, you know, the OSU's last great tight end, Brandon Pettigrew, you know, went on played for the Lions for for a while, was on this team, but he missed this game. He was out for this game and didn't play. Um, so they obviously they didn't they didn't have their stud tight end who was such a big part of that offense. I think I mean, your your top receivers that year were would have been uh, Dez, Hubert, and I think, and then and then Pettigrew, and and him missing this game coming into it just definitely felt like a this is going to be tough. Um, but they, Davis, it, it, OSU always seems to have somebody who's able to step up, and, and, and Davis did that day when they needed him. Yeah. So you see, they're starting to get a little bit of more pressure on Daniel here, make him run around. Ill advised throw here. And there's Thank a you. second pick of the game, <laughs> kills another drive, and we're still sitting at 21 17. A nice return here as well. Get you in good field position. Third and long as well. So doing some different stuff up front on third and longs. They do some uh, they do some different stuff on the on the the final play of the or the final play for all intents and purposes of the game. It's kind of the game ceiling interception. They do something interesting defensively as well. So now you have Oklahoma State with a third and twelve, third and long here. Wait, it looks like they're running some type of Y cross, but they kind of break off the routes here and some guys make a play right here. Davis again, pretty good, pretty good game from him. Yeah, uh, for hey. a guy, I think those were might have been his only two of the year. Hey, you know, like I said, someone's got to step up, and he did. Not only does he take away from a Missouri <laughs> defender, he takes away from a teammate as well. Yeah, someone's got to get it. It's when do like, you get it? Uh, just figure it out. It's like Dwight Schrute playing basketball. <laughs> he just goes up, and he's going to take it. It's his. So at this point, uh, I'm I'm. I only remember from rewatch. I don't remember as much of the game. Um, I'm sure I was, I mean, I was still watching, yeah. uh, but as what memory serves, I was, I was probably drunk and, and very obnoxious <laughs> to the OU fans. So, that OSU was now going to go up 28, 17 on Missouri. 28, 17 with six and a half minutes left in the game. Missouri comes down to scores. And this is like, there was some, as you said, the game was sloppy and like kind of going over overall, there was some sloppy moments, but there was also some, like that last play in this one here, oh, there yeah. was a lot of high level football in this game too. Just missed getting to Chase Daniel here. Great throw, great mm. catch. I mean, this was a really back and forth game with a lot of quality football. So it was kind of fun to go back and revisit this, having no idea what happened in the game. Yeah, yeah it, so you, it's a great ahead. game. I think the sloppy part is you had what five turnovers. What was it, at least three missed field, missed goals, field goals, a botch um, fake punt. Uh, yeah. uh, just yeah, it, it just from that standpoint, and again, Des getting hit up. And I think it was also a really physical game as well. Um, because again, you came into this, everyone's like, well, they don't play a lot of defense, but their offenses are high powered. And I, I think both defenses actually played, played well in this yeah. game, um, and played a very physical game. And, and, and they were allowed to now. I think some of the physicality would be allowed today, but you know, we can debate if that's good or not. I'm going to be like, I don't like guys getting concussed. So no. that's probably better. We get to see if more guys play for longer. So that's good. That's so a you go, They go for two here. I don't think this pick, this pick doesn't count in the official stats, but there's another one. And who is this like a defensive end dropping back? This guy is humongous. Uh, let's see. Was that 90? 90, 91, I believe. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Let me go pull up the old Oklahoma State 2008 roster. And uh, I thought you had it in your thing. Rolodex there. Uh, yeah. This, this, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember everybody Nine. from. Great from catch there. for the big guy. Two point conversion fail. So can't tie with a field goal. Oklahoma State gets it back. Just trying to get a couple first downs here. Great job by these two guys. Yeah, Robinson kind of extended the play on a screen when it was kind of dead, and then you have Hunter finding some space. And so that's the guys that have probably played together for a while right there. 
figuring that out because that's tough to do just on the fly kind of be in sync with that with the screen that's supposed to be over here and he comes back over there so they pick up one first down not able to pick up the second here on third and ten you've run about you run about two minutes or so off the clock missouri's going wild they think they got a chance to come back here and win the game you got second and six. Missouri's driving. You see they're past the 40-yard line there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and then it's over. But you got a nice little game here up front. These guys have been – these guys were showing blitz. And I don't know why. It's, this is really bizarre from Missouri. But, you know, when you count it, there's five over here. Missouri's in empty protection. So they just decide to slide everyone this way. And just leave this defensive end unblocked and be like, all right, Chase Daniel, that, he's yours. Figure it out. So they all slide that way. And then Oklahoma State drops those two guys out. So this is something that's happening a lot in modern football uh, with creepers and simulated pressures and all that. But you get it here, just rushing four. You keep your coverage and you get With a great pressure. play. Yeah. And you see it from different angles here. The next angle is really good. I think you can kind of see his eyes right here. This is a really good angle. I mean, Chase is just broadcasting where he's going to go. Yeah. He looks down, scans. He kind of is watching Chase Daniel. Sees I, his eyes. I wonder if he just can't see him behind. Yeah, he may not. He is not a uh, I man of immense stature, Chase Daniel. <laughs> so he's, ta- he's taller than player. us standing on his uh, NFL money, though. So. <laughs> stacks on stacks on stacks so this is kind of this somewhat seals the game but i put this in here because i'm like oh my gosh this guy's got a punt after that fake punt i'm like just all right this get this thing off and i know i know what the final score is but man i feel like this guy took forever getting just kill get it off clock. Kill get it off clock. your foot kill some clock yeah I believe you're kicking to macklin there so oh yeah nothing's ever kind of final he puts the. It's, it's not final till the sco- the clock reads zero and someone's got a lead. And they're pitching it all over the place, and then this this is what made me laugh. <laughs> this whole this whole thing, and then they cut a gun on the side, and even the whole time he just doesn't stop drinking the Gatorade. I'm like, just the high the high pressure of the situation. He's just like, all right. So those are the highlights from the game. But then we got some we got some more from the post game here. I thought this provides that, interesting context from uh was that also the game I'm trying to remember where there was it two thousand eight or two thousand nine there they would cut down to Gundy because Gundy would just be sitting on a bench when the defense was on the field yes, prepping his plays. Him, they showed yeah. him earlier in the game just look, kind of looking at his his call and sheet so, on the bench. This is when it kind of became a thing like because they had offensive coordinators, but Gundy Rent coached the offense. I mean, like we see a lot of coaches do. Um, he didn't have a true OC. He called the plays. So he he wouldn't even watch, worry about the defense. He'd be prepping up for the next drive and prepping plays. And so they show yeah. him sitting on the bench, the defense is on the field playing great, and he's not even paying attention. He's just he's prepping what they're gonna do on the next offensive drive. And they talked about it quite a bit. And this was the first time that really anyone had really like shown it yeah. and focused on it and so it became this big part of the story with oklahoma state and mike gundy of like this is this is what he does he doesn't even uh, which is obviously very different because we know as we know you know 2009 they hired or 2010 they hired dana holgerson and they've had an oc ever since and then yeah. we can debate as to how much uh, uh of the offense gundy has his fingers in but at that point he was the oc he was calling the plays and it was just it was just kind of crazy to see that you know, there's a coach that are sitting on the bench, not paying attention when the defense is on the field because he's got to prep the offense. It was just so unusual at the time. Yeah, they show him with his his play sheet a couple times on the sideline. But here's kind of the final, the end of the game here. I think there must be a radio call pass. over it. Number six, the penalties declined. Game's over. Ladies and gentlemen, let the party in Stillwater begin. Yeah, it that's a radio call. The biggest road upset victory in the history of Oklahoma State football. Wake up, America. There's another emerging power in the Big 12 residing in Stillwater, America, after Oklahoma State's 28-23 to victory over the Missouri Tigers. Oh, yeah. Know anybody? Parker picked himself out of a crowd last, <laughs> last week, so... 
Uh, no, nope, I am. Here. I'm. I am sitting sideways in a, in a Norman in a, in a bench. <laughs> Talk, take a knee, and then y'all hey, go. Take a knee, guys. Hold up. Then y'all go. Y'all do what you need to. Do. <laughs> okay, now. All right. You uh, you guys are learning. Okay, if you just stay focused. Okay, and um, stay with the plan. Okay, this was a great, great team effort, and we made some some poor decisions as coaches. In the special teams, okay, and that's my fault. All right, but here's what's important: you guys overcame the mistake. On the sideline, guys started to get a little upset, and then you realize it's going to be okay. All right, um, we had a, a low kick and missed a, uh, or we we uh, missed a field goal. It's okay because we need that guy to come back later on a punt on everything. Okay, but the reason you guys are having success is because you're learning to believe in each other and play one play at a time. Okay, that's as big okay. a win um, as in the history of this school. All right. Again, Again I I know 2011 Bedlam. You you finally get the, the OU win that you've been trying to get since you, he got the head coaching job. Uh, it wins you a Big 12 title, the only one you've got still. Uh, first, you it sends you to the to the Fiesta Bowl where you. You know, knock off Stanford, and it's your first and, and only no first twelve win season. Because we had a twelve win season last year. Um, that is the most important win of the Gundy era. Was that a turning point? Because I think it said he was this 18, one was. And ni- eighteen and nineteen coming into that game. Well, because let's see, his only losing season was year one in two thousand five. Then they basically went, they went um, seven and six, seven and six the next two years, and six and seven. And then you get to this year, and this was the breakthrough year. I mean, the, yeah. this was. This was the breakthrough year. Now you're sitting at what? Uh, that was week seven, so six and zero, oh, seven and zero. Oh. Uh, you were seventeen coming into it. Um, you had beaten A and M. Uh, you had won a, a road game. I think it was Washington State. Like you were sitting undefeated. You just went on the road, as they said it. It's the biggest road win in Oklahoma State upset in Oklahoma State history. You went on the road and knocked off number three Missouri, who had been in the Big Twelve title game the year before, had a Heisman contender. This was this to me is it was the first big win that really turned everything around for OSU. Like this was like, okay, this is for real. This is going to work. This is, this is legit. Um, and, and I stand by it's the second biggest win of his career because it, it really did. I and mean, obviously, you know, they had, they had won some gates, but this is, this was the biggest game they'd had ever. It was the biggest win they'd had ever at this point. And so it, it proved, it was like a proof of concept. Like this guy knows what he's doing. Um, this team is going to be fun and exciting. And, I mean, it kind of set the expectation to me of what OSU is moving forward. Like, you should expect to go on, be able to go on the road and knock off a number three team in the country. Before that, that's not an expectation as an OSU mm-hmm. fan. I mean, they have been so bad for so long. You had a couple of nice seasons with Les Miles, but and you you've been able to go on the road and beat Oklahoma. But I mean, to think you could go on the road to a number three team that's as good as Missouri was and and win that game is just not something you did as an Oklahoma State fan. And now that's something. You know, you don't expect it every week, but it's a thing you know you can do. And and I think that's something that started to become established with that win. Now, is that at this time, did you imagine well, could you imagine that Gundy would still be the head coach going into 2022? Was that the hope, or was it kind of like, you know, what was kind of the thought on him and how did this did that kind of change the fans' perception as well? This game? Oh, yeah. Or? Yeah. Because again, you'd had Year one, you'd had less miles, and he'd been successful, right? Mm-hmm. And Gundy takes over, k- kicks some guys off the team, and they go. What was it? It was eleven games at that point, five and or four and four and seven in year one. So you this big step back in year one. Mm-hmm. Then you're six and six. It's kind of weird. You get to a bowl game, you win. The next year, it's six and six again. You've got some quarterback stuff with Bobby Reed, Zach Robinson. Um, you lost a game at Troy, but you get six and six, and you go in the bowl game, and you you get seven and six. And so you're in year four now you've been like the record again was, was okay. Like it, you had two winning seasons, two bowl wins. Like it was yeah. fine, but there wasn't something to look at it and be like, this is awesome. Like, it's not how it, it's not how you view a shoe now. No. And, and remotely. And so 
This was the breakthrough season for him. This was the breakthrough season for Oklahoma State. And this was the breakthrough game of that season. Because they went 9-3, and three, and the only three teams they lost to were the three teams, Texas Tech, OU, and Texas, who finished in a three-way tie across the Big 12 South, right? Yeah. So those, you lost to the three best teams in the South, any one of them who could have won the Big 12 and gone on to the national championship or whatever, and you finish nine and three, you go, I know they lost the, the bowl game to Ole Miss, which or to, I'm sorry, to Oregon, which was a big game for OSU as well. Cause I remember coming out after that one, Gundy talked about the physicality and they didn't play physical enough. But I think, I think a lot of, of this season wasn't just a breakthrough. I think Gundy and the players and everybody really learned a lot from this year that has allowed them to continue to build and, and carry on and, and build this program to to what we view it as today but this was the breakthrough year and this was the breakthrough game of that year yeah well thanks for you know thanks for sharing this game with me i i, I hadn't really known much about it and go back and watch it and reading about it it was a really really interesting game and now hearing that perspective of how it kind of may have changed kind of gundy's career trajectory is really interesting too because he's a really good coach and it's kind of just interesting to see how sometimes as you can kind of be teetering on the brink and just one, 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 one way, one the other way. And it, it kind of pushes you forward. Where can people find you? I know you do a ton of stuff related to the big 12 <laughs> and Oklahoma state. So where can people find some of your stuff? Uh, well, I'm, I am the the host and, and, and operator of the 1012 podcast and the 1012 podcast network. Um, you can find us on Twitter at 1012 network, T E N the number 12, the word network. We have the podcast that covers all 10 teams in the big 12 conference plus UCF, Houston, BYU and Cincinnati. Uh, like I said, we are a podcast network. Go to 1012network.com and find all 11 shows that we have. We're a Big 12-focused podcast network, so all of our shows are focused on this particular conference. We've got uh, school-specific shows. Uh, we're still building up and adding more shows as we find the right ones to fit. Um, and then you can, if you want to follow me personally on Twitter, it's OKTXARPoke. Uh, you get a lot of OSU stuff on there. And you get a lot more Big 12 stuff on, on 1012 Network. All right. Thanks again so much for joining us and sharing this game with us. Uh, that's another episode of the College Football Games that made us. If you like this, you know, hit the thumbs up, subscribe, leave some comments so we can game the YouTube algorithm together.